Wrestling is often a family industry. Of course, this largely comes from the days of the territories when its secrets were closely guarded, and so it was better to induct those you could trust rather than those you couldn't. And that's led to a lot of great father-son duos finding success over the years. But who are the greatest of all time? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at today. So join us as we take a deep dive into family business, wrestling's greatest father-son duos. And if we're going to start anywhere, let's do so with one of the most well-known and timely examples of this, as over on current day Raw, Dominic Mysterio is currently showing us he's more than capable of living up to his father Ray. Sure, it wasn't always that way, as when Dom Dom first joined the WWE roster in May of 2020, he clearly wasn't ready for the spotlight yet. No, if anything, he should have really gone to NXT at this point and spent some time there honing his skills. But wanting to fast track him because of his family name, Vince McMahon continued to push the rookie as a main roster act anyway, with him hoping that partnering the youngster up with his father would be enough to get things to where they needed to be. And while this didn't work overnight, eventually it paid dividends, as by 2022 when Dominic turned heel on his dad and joined the Judgment Day, things started to turn around in a major way. That's right, it was here that everything suddenly clicked for the San Diego native, and he became one of the most effective heels in all of wrestling. Thank God it did then, because with Rey being arguably the greatest luchador of all time, it was always going to be difficult for his son to step out of his spotlight anyway. Yes, it's true, Dominic still has a ways to go if he wants to be as good as his dad, but the fact that he's gotten to the level he has in such a relatively short space of time suggests that he has this in his blood after all. Who knows, maybe as the years go on and his skills get better, he'll even prove himself to be as good in the ring as the former WWE Champion. That said, even if he doesn't get to that level, it's not like anyone's going to hold it against him because, let's be honest, few can match Rey Mysterio at his peak. Really, for a son to overshadow his father, it takes someone truly generational in their talent. Someone like our next subject, the son of Rocky Johnson, The Rock. Now, we're sure we don't have to explain to any of you who The Rock is. After all, he's one of the most famous men on the planet. That said, he may never have gotten even a percentage of what he has were it not for the fact that he was able to stand on the shoulders of his father. And that's because back during the territory day of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, Rocky Johnson was a top attraction pretty much everywhere he went. It didn't matter if it was Memphis, Canada, or Texas, the Soul Man always drew a crowd along with him. And when he joined WWF during the latter decade, he took his winning ways with him there too. As alongside Tony Atlas, he'd become one half of the first black tag team champions that promotion had ever seen. So obviously then, once his boy Dwayne decided to join the industry in 1996, there was a lot of expectation on him to live up to what had come before. What no one realized at the time though was that he wouldn't just meet these expectations, no, he'd absolutely shatter them. How would he do this? Well, by becoming one of the biggest stars in the history of wrestling, and at points, the number one guy in New York. Hell, by the time his run there was over, he'd be an eight-time WWE Champion and a household name the likes of which hadn't been seen since the days of Hulk Hogan. And even this wasn't the end of his success either, as once the wrestling world had been conquered, Dwayne Johnson went over to Hollywood and made that his own personal playground too, with him starring in some of the biggest franchises out there and drawing millions of dollars in the process. Obviously then, this has taken his family name to new heights, something which his father must have been overjoyed with prior to his death in 2020. And Rocky Johnson isn't the only since-deceased father who can take pride in the work his children have done, because our next subject, Dusty Rhodes, had a similar situation happen to him with his kids, Cody and Dustin. Now, if you've been watching wrestling regularly over the last few years, then you'll be all too aware of the meteoric rise of Cody Rhodes someone who's gone from the mid-card hell of the Stardust gimmick all the way to helping to start AEW and then main eventing WrestleMania in the space of four 12-month periods. That said, for as big of a deal as he's become, he's not the only Rhodes son who's made an impact in the industry, as before any of that, his brother Dustin was also forging quite a path for himself, first as the natural in WCW, and then more famously as the truly groundbreaking <sighs> gold dust in 90s WWF. But then each of them were always going to have to do something special if they wanted to stand out, because when your dad is the legendary American dream, half measures simply aren't going to cut it. 
After all, this was one of the biggest babyface stars of the entire territory era we're talking about here, as well as a former NWA World's Champion and a multiple-time Hall of Famer to boot. So for Cody and Dustin to even achieve half of what Dusty did is saying a lot, and it's a sign of just how much talent they picked up from him. Hell, it may still be that the former of the two manages to go as far as to usurp him yet, as with his career still in its peak years, and with him seemingly being the man most likely to beat Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Universal title, there remains the possibility he'll be an even bigger star once this is all said and done. But even if he doesn't reach that level, it won't matter much in the long run as through the work of him, his brother, and his dad, the Rhodes family legacy as being one of the best ever is secure for some time to come. Is it the best family of all time though? Well, while you could certainly argue for that, there is another who might dispute this, and that's the one made up of Stu Hart and his many, many sons. Yes, the Hart family has certainly earned its status as one of the great lineages in wrestling just for the sheer amount of performers it's produced, if nothing else. That said, for the purposes of brevity here, we're going to focus on his two most famous sons, Brett and Owen. And that's because each of these were so special, they arguably outshine anything their dad did in the ring, even at his peak. How did they manage this, though? After all, let's not forget, when it comes to the patriarch of the family, He's a man who built an entire promotion and helped to train dozens of legendary figures in the industry. Well, in Owen's case, he did so by using some of the most innovative high-flying moves anyone had seen in America at the time and combining this with his fantastic character work to become a top star in mid-90s WWF when no one would have ever expected him to reach such a level. Then, of course, there's his brother Brett, someone who can hold an honest-to-God claim to being the greatest in-ring worker of all time. Really, to list all the Hitman's accomplishments here would take too long, but suffice to say, as a seven-time world champion and the man who inspired many current-day performers to lace up their own boots, we can confidently proclaim he's earned his spot amongst the GOATs. And that no doubt made Stu Hart happy to hear then, as he was always one who prized excellence above all else, especially when it came to his own family. In fact, he'd often push his kids the hardest down there in the infamous Hart family dungeon for that very reason as he wanted them to shine brighter than others. But not every father has the same philosophy of baptizing their children by fire when it comes to getting them to carry on their legacy. No, some are happier just to sit back and watch their offspring figure it out for themselves for the most part. And that seems to have been the case for our next subject today as it happens. Who are we talking about here? Why, Rikishi and his three sons, Jimmy, Jay, and Solo. Yes, it would have been pretty easy for the former Attitude Era star to use all his power to help get his three kids pushed to the moon before their time. After all, not only was Rikishi a big deal at the turn of the millennium as a one-time Intercontinental Champion and three-time Tag Team Champion, but he's also a member of the famed Anawaii family too. In the end though, he chose not to go down this route and instead let his twin sons Jimmy and Jay Uso forge their own paths when they first debuted in New York in 2010. And that proved to be the best thing for them as it turned out, because after a relatively slow start trying to make a name for themselves in the wasteland that was WWE's tag division at the time, they were eventually able to build a reputation as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, tag teams of their era. And it's their commitment to being the best which has seen them become eight-time WWE tag team champions over the years, with one of these being the longest individual reign of all time. That said, for as proud as this has made their father, they're not the only son of his who's been making waves in the wrestling world as of late, because since debuting on the main roster in summer of 2022, Solo Sokoa, the brother of Jimmy and Jay, has also been proving to be something of a prodigy too. Hell, despite still being very much a rookie in fact, he's been able to establish himself as a main event force in record time, one who's now become a key part of the bloodline angle, probably the best storyline WWE has done this century. But for as key of a role as Solo has started playing in the bloodline, he's not the head of the table. No, for that we have to look to our next subject, Roman Reigns, as also being a member of the Anawaii family, he has a famous lineage to live up to in the form of his brother Rosie and their father Sika. That's right, we were always bound to get to this one eventually, as you could argue that there's not a bigger star in all of wrestling today than the Tribal Chief. But before he was even born, his dad was already paving the way for him as back in the territory days, Sika was one of the top tag team performers out there. 
In fact, alongside his brother Afa, he'd become a tag team champion across a dozen separate promotions, and this included perhaps the most famous run of all as part of the WWF roster between 1983 and 1988. So it should come as no surprise then that he was considered a legend long before he finally hung up his boots once and for all during the latter year. Of course, like with so many other people we've discussed today, this made it difficult for any of his children to live to his long list of achievements, something his oldest son Rosie found out the hard way when he signed up with Vince McMahon in the early 2000s. Sure, he did have success as both part of 3 Minute Warning and later as a tag team partner to the Hurricane, but despite that, it was largely understood Rosie was never going to be a top guy in New York, even if he had the family lineage behind him. No, it would be his brother instead who really picked up that mantle, as since debuting in 2012 as part of The Shield, Roman Reigns' rise to the top has been unstoppable, even if fans weren't always behind him. Still, even if he did have nuclear heat during his early run, since his transformation into the Tribal Chief in 2020, the youngest son of Sika has fully settled into his role as face of WWE. And this means that, like with his cousin The Rock, he holds the rare distinction of being a child who's actually outshone his father in the long run. But he's not the only performer of his generation who holds this distinction, and that's because a frequent rival of his, Bray Wyatt, has also managed to become such a big deal, he's not only threatened to completely overshadow his brother Bo Dallas, but also their father, IRS. Yes, on the face of it, none of these three seem like they should be related, as with Bray being a cult leader turned horror movie monster, and Bo being a delusional heel who thinks he's a babyface, there doesn't appear to be any obvious genetic connection. And that feeling is only heightened when you take their dad Mike Rotundo into account, as his character of Erwin R. Scheister, wrestling's very own tax man, couldn't be further from either of their gimmicks. But related they are, and through their successes during the 80s and beyond, they've been able to quietly build something of a dynasty for themselves. Obviously, it helps that each of them has held notable titles during their runs, with IRS being a tag team champion in both WWF and WCW, as well as a three-time heavyweight title holder during his time in championship wrestling from Florida during the early part of his career. That said, one thing he never held was the top prize in a major nationwide promotion, something both his sons have been able to do, sort of. And the only reason we say sort of here is because while Bo Dallas is a former world champion under the WWE banner, technically it happened while he was in the developmental brand NXT. As for his brother though, well there's no such asterisk here. No, when it comes to Bray Wyatt, all his success is on full display for all to see one-time WWE Champion, two-time Universal Champion, two-time Tag Team Champion, and that's only the gold he's held around his waist at various points. On top of this, he's also proven himself to be one of the sharpest creative minds out there today, something which has been evident in his ability to constantly reinvent himself. And with it looking like his brother Bo might now finally be working alongside him on screen under the guise of the mysterious Uncle Howdy, we're sure this will only help the Rotunda family to go from strength to strength. Hell, at this point, we wouldn't be surprised to see IRS get involved himself in some form and complete the set in the process. But let's move on from fathers with multiple sons in the industry for a moment and instead focus on someone who has one kid who picked up his mantle and went further with it than he could ever possibly have hoped. That's right, it's time to talk about the family lineage that goes from Bob to Randy Orton. At least, part of this one goes from Bob to Randy, because in truth, there's actually a third person in this equation, and that's Bob Orton Sr., someone who was a big star back in the 60s. That said, for the purposes of this video, we're going to focus on the latter two of this family tree, as it was with Bob Orton Jr. that their legacy really got going. Why was this? Well, Cowboy Bob managed to become arguably an even bigger deal than his dad. In fact, so over did he get that he even had a role to play in the first ever WrestleMania main event when he cornered Roddy Piper and Paul Orndorff during their tag team bout against Hulk Hogan and Mr. T. Yes, it helped that he had the great heel gimmick of being someone who'd injured his arm and just kept the cast on for an unreasonably long amount of time afterwards so it could be used as a weapon. But this didn't mean he wasn't great even without it a fact which certainly showed in his work. So obviously then, when his son Randy got his start with WWE in 2002, he was left with very big shoes to fill. Luckily though, the Knoxville native was so naturally adept at being in the ring, he quickly outshone whatever his family had done before him. 
and that included becoming the youngest ever world champion in company history when he beat Chris Benoit for the honor at SummerSlam 2004 at the tender age of just 24. But this wouldn't be the only thing on his long, long list of accomplishments, because since then, Randy has not only won the world title a further 13 times, but he's also managed to remain in the upper echelon of WWE's main event scene for over two decades now. Hell, at this point, he's long since become a made man, and his eventual Hall of Fame induction seems like an inevitability. One person who unfortunately never managed to reach the same levels of success, though, was a one-time protege of his, as it hurts all the more because it's Ted DiBiase Jr., the son of the legendary billion-dollar man Ted DiBiase. Ah yes, Ted DiBiase Jr., a man who on the face of things seemed to have it all. He had the look, he had the lineage, and most importantly, he had the attention of Vince McMahon. But then why wouldn't he? because back in the 80s, his father, the Million Dollar Man, was one of the top heels in all of New York. And before he'd even arrived there, he was already a multiple-time heavyweight champion in places such as St. Louis and Georgia. Hell, so regarded and trusted was he that Vince basically tasked him with playing a version of himself in Golden Era WWF, a millionaire heel who liked to lord his wealth over everyone else. So it's just a shame his son Ted Jr. never really managed to make the same level of an impact in late 2000s and early 2010s WWE, as he was pretty much a background player for the most part. Sure, there would be times when attempts were made to get him over to that next level, such as when he was made a part of Randy Orton's legacy stable, or when he was given his own faction, the DiBiase Posse. But no matter how hard the company tried to make him a thing, it just never played out as, unlike his dad, he didn't have the same level of charisma or in-ring skill. And this was ultimately why, after realizing his career wasn't going to the heights he wanted it to, Ted Jr. decided to call it a day in 2013 when he left WWE and pursued a career in real estate instead. Yes, it's a shame he wasn't able to match up to what the Million Dollar Man had done a few decades before, but at least he was able to carry on his legacy for a little while, reminding fans in the process that the DiBiase name will always have a place in wrestling. But while the DiBiases deserve their own spot in wrestling history, they arguably pale in comparison to what the Guerreros have been able to achieve. And it's that very family which is going to be the subject of our next father-son duo as it happens, because it's time for us to look at Chavo Guerrero Jr. and his dad, Chavo Classic. Now we're sure modern viewers are all too aware of Chavo Jr.'s achievements in the ring, as whether it be his time in WCW, WWE, or even places like TNA and Lucha Underground, he's been able to build up a consistent reputation for himself as one of the most reliable and underrated performers out there. And when it comes to where he got these skills, well, that's largely from his father, as back in the 70s and 80s, Chavo Sr. was one of the top stars of the territory circuit wherever he went. Seriously, as the older brother of Hector, Mondo, and Eddie Guerrero, you could argue it was Chavo Sr. who really laid the groundwork for what the rest of his siblings would go on to do in the future. But for as great as they all ended up being, the real beneficiary of being able to sin under his learning tree was ultimately his son, because taking everything his dad taught him and executing it to perfection, the younger Chavo was able to become a six-time cruiserweight champion, a five-time tag team champion, and a one-time ECW champion over the course of his in-ring career. And as if that wasn't enough, he even got to share the ring with Chavo Sr. for a while in the mid-2000s when he was brought into the WWE under the moniker of Chavo Classic, something which really highlighted for fans watching just how much chemistry the pair had, and just how much the younger of the two had been able to take from his dad. But then we guess each of the people we've discussed today have just as much chemistry, because if they didn't, then it's unlikely the sons in question would ever have followed their fathers into the ring and found themselves carrying on their legacy.